Good morning, everyone. A very joyful morning. The weather outside as gilded as the rooms inside. Um, we have a sold out symposium this morning, and it is fitting, I think, that it op inaugurates the opening of the Salon Dore that has been over three years in the making. The renovation itself, one and a half years, and the research and development, another one and a half years. The project was the work of, of two curators, two full-time conservators, 17 contract conservators and technicians, hundreds, literally hundreds of local individuals whose assistance was, um, was, 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 was given and used. Curatorial colleagues from collections both in the US and throughout Europe. You'll be, we will be re uh, acknowledging people um, this morning, and above all, in first place, a, a grand chapeau to Martin Chapman, our curator in charge of European decorative arts, whose project this has been. <laughs> he, he has been ably, loyally, and tremendously well assisted by Maria St. Angelo, our associate curator of European decorative arts. And with attention and a commitment worthy of a US general, the conservation efforts have been led by Leslie Bone, our head objects conservator, who should be afforded to. Now, I'm going to ask you not to hold your applause, but I want, as we are being um, taped and streamed and will be on our website, it is an opportunity for me to mention by name some of the people who in the staff, or on our staff, have worked so hard to make the project happen and happen so well. I'm going to just mention some names. Bear with me. Um, Patty Laxon, our Director of Facilities and Operation. Krista Brunyara, our Director of Exhibitions. Craig Harris, Manager of Installations. And his team, the Preparations Team, with a particular thanks to Mike Lay and Ian Cox. Sarah Baylor Hogarty, Brinker Ferguson in the, magazine, in the Museum's Marketing Department for digitally capturing the entire salon with Sue Grinnells, our Director of Photo Services, and Randy Dodson, photographer. Today, Sheila Presley, Director of Education, Renee Baldocchi, Director of Public Programs, organizing this tremendous event, and the conservation staff directed by Leslie, but I want to mention with particular gratitude, Natasha Morovich, our Frames Conservator, and the conservation staff that include, included Jessica Burkhardt, Catherine Quanier, and Tegan Broderick, many of whom are here today. Now, a project like this really could not have been possible without a tremendous financial support. The room is named now for Cynthia Fry Gunn and John A. Gunn. In, in, important corporate sponsorship has been given by Breguet from Paris. And many of the lead gifts for the renovation of the Salon Dore were made in honor of the museum's former director, late director, John E. Buchanan, Jr. And I'm, I'm very happy to recognize this. Um, the catalog itself, which we expect you all to buy, uh, <laughs> is, has been ably managed by our, conservation, our head of publications, Leslie Dutcher. The Salon Dore, as you're going to hear over the course of the day upstairs, has been moved eight times in its 230-year history. This is the last time. <laughs> it was sold by Duveen Brothers as part of the Hotel Crillon in 1955 to Richard Ream for his ballroom in La Dolphine in Hillsborough. The late Bruno Ponce, an, a, a friend of many of us here and a, 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 a superb historian of architecture and the period room, this, the late Bruno Ponce set the, the trail to understand the history of the room, which for a long time had been thought to come from the Hôtel de Humière on the Rue de Lille. In fact, as our research and his research began, and Martin and Xavier's and others' research has confirmed, the Salon Doré, as we call it, was part of the Hôtel de la Trémouille on the Rue Saint-Dominique from 1781 to, seven, to 1877. The Recreation of the Salon is exemplary as both in, in aesthetic, archaeological, and historical terms. During the process of working on the room, 
the inventory of the taken after the death of the Duchesse de la Tremouille in 1790 was found at a critical moment and Xavier Bonnet shared the document with everyone involved and we were able to not exactly turn, uh, turn direction but we were able to go back to the right coloring of the paneling, gray, cool gray, gris rechampi en or and more importantly to go to the coloring of the upholstery and the curtains as had been listed in this document. We moved from ducal crimson to blue and white and that is the color that you will see in the room today. As you will hear today, the salon is the result of the union of two teenage scions of ducal families, the 17-year-old Charles Bretagne Marie, Prince de Tarente, and his 18-year-old wife, the very wealthy heiress, Louise Emmanuel de Crillon, Chatillon, daughter of the deceased Duke de Chatillon, an heiress with an annual income of 200,000 livres a year. The couple were married at Versailles, in July 1781, two ducal, uh, two ducal uh, and, uh, children, teenagers, marrying <coughs> in the grandest of possible ways. 750 invitations were sent out, 2,000 tickets to the wedding. The event cost probably more than the room. The event cost 66,954 livres for the wedding expenses and the, bride's tr and the bride's family's trousseaus. And this included the services of Marie Antoinette's hairdresser for the bride's mother and a series of lessons de révérence, or curtsy lessons, for the young bride herself. <laughs> the groom's family, the Duke, the Duke and Duchesse de la Tremouille, were taking over the possession of an earlier hotel particulier. They took residence built of, 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 of the Hotel de Neuchâtel, built by L'Assurance in the early 18th century, that had gone through a series of owners and tenants, the most recent being Armand U, Marquis de Miromenil, who was the Chancelier of France, a very grand figure memorialized by Houdon. The young man, the young bride, the Prince de Tarant's formidable mother, Marie Maximilienne, Princesse de saint kirbourg who recommended that he return to his regiment at Arras on the night of his nuptials, we don't know whether he followed that instruction, um, she and her husband, the Duc de la Tremouille et de Toire, went about refurbishing their new residence in the early 1780s through the services of the architect Pierre-Auguste de La Poise. And it is exceptionally fitting that the Legion of Honor, our museum, which is based on the Hotel de Salle, constructed in the 1780s by the Duchesse's brother, Prince Frederick de Salle Kierbourg, that this house, our museum, should now boast the Salon de Compagnie of his sister's suite of apartments on the Rue Saint-Dominique. It's very fitting. As you'll hear from the tremendous lectures that are uh, in front of us this today. We will look at the history of the salon, its use, its role in the suite of apartments, its history after the deaths of the Tremouille family, and the subject of period rooms and their reinstallations in American museums historically and today. I can't tell you how impressive the salon re reconstruction has been the attention, the ver authenticity, but most important, the pure joy of seeing the room so beautifully lit and furnished as it would have been in 1781. 